President Donald J. Trump. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, this is going to be a lot of fun tonight. We have a little time, right? Hello, Iowa. I'm thrilled to be back with so many proud, hardworking patriots in the heartland, absolute heartland of America. Thank you very much. We're, we're just 33 days away from Iowa, first in the nation. I wonder how you got that. Do you got that because of me? First in the nation caucuses and uh, we're going to keep you first in the nation for a long time. You know, the, uh, the Democrats bailed out. And without Trump, you wouldn't be first in the nation anymore either. But we kept you right here where you belong. You're going to be here for a long time. First in the nation. On Monday, January 15th, we're going to win the Iowa caucuses. And then we're going to crush crooked Joe Biden next November. And we're going to very simply make America great again. And, you know, the polls came out just recently, and we're way, way, way up. You have to do me a favor, just go out and vote. You know, terrible things have happened. Oh, he's got it made. Well, wait till November. No, you got to get out, caucus, get out and vote, because we have to big, uh, we have to put big numbers up, really big numbers. Sometimes, you know, you're leading by so much, they say, oh, I think let's sit home and watch a movie, and we'll watch the results afterwards. And we don't want to do that. you got to get out and vote caucuses. And after we do that, we'll worry about November, but we got to get Biden out of there. He's horrible. Worst president we've ever had. I want to thank Iowa Attorney General, who has been incredible. I'll tell you, she's an incredible patriot and woman, Brenna Byrd. Thank you. Uh, State Representatives, Luana Stoltenberg. Luana, wherever you may be, Luana, thank you very much. Great supporter. Steve Bradley. Thank you, Steve. Great. Heather Hora. Heather, thank you. Thank you, Heather. Mark Cisneros. Mark. Thank you, Mark. These are great people. Cindy Golding and Bobby Kaufman. 
Thank you very much. Great job, Bobby. Former Acting Attorney General of the United States, Matt Whitaker. And we have this beautiful, big, strong, physical specimen. I never knew they made punters that big. I didn't think punters, but he's a big guy. All American, number one in the country, Tory Taylor from the Iowa Hawkeyes. Oh, he's going to make a lot of money. I want to be his agent. Can I be your agent, please? I want to be his agent. Anyway, you're going to have a great career. Fantastic. Almost 49 yards a punt. That's a big number, number one in the country. So it's great to have you, and the team is wonderful. Wonderful people. Thank you. Most importantly, I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. You remember when I started, I said, we're going to bring back Christmas. People said, sir, uh, it would be preferable if you didn't say Merry Christmas. I said, like hell, we're going to bring it back. And we brought it back. During this holiday season, families all across America are struggling under the brutal weight of Bidenomics. You know, Bidenomics means a lot of bad things. This year alone, the typical American family is $7,500 poorer because Crooked Joe's globalist blunders and greedy betrayals have really hurt us badly. Joe Biden is a low IQ individual, and he is truly the worst, most incompetent, and most corrupt president in the history of the United States. You know, I used to treat him with much more respect, but once they indicted me over charging a fake and broken and corrupt election, and by the way, yesterday Rasmussen came out with a poll. Did you see it? It said that on mail-in voting, 20 percent of the ballots were rigged and broken and disgusting. 20 percent, that's about uh, millions more than we would have needed. And it's a disgrace what's taking place between open borders and broken borders and a broken election system. It's a horrible thing that's going on. But I would have treated him better, and I treat him not necessarily nicely because he's a terrible president, but I would treat him with a lot more respect than I do right now because what he did is he opened a Pandora's box. That's a very bad thing and a very dangerous thing for our country. The Biden administration is running on the fumes of the great success of the Trump administration. Without us, this thing would have crashed to levels never seen before. And if we're not elected, we'll have a depression the likes of which I don't believe anybody has ever seen. Maybe 1929. That's what's going to happen. We're running on fumes. With your vote by Christmas, and we're going to have it by Christmas 2024, that's just shortly after the election because of the momentum of our victory, we will have a U.S. economy roaring back, and in 2025, we'll have one of the greatest economic years this nation has ever recorded. You know that. People from all over the world will stop coming to the border because they will know that just like three years ago, think only three years ago, we were energy independent, we had strong borders, we had everything going. But they're not going to come because they won't be able to get through. Three years ago, we had the strongest border we've ever had. Today, we have probably the worst border anywhere in the world, let alone in our country's history. Together, we're going to bring our country back from hell. Not one thing, if you think about it, has gotten better under Crooked Joe Biden. What? Name one thing where we're doing well. We're not respected. The world is laughing at us. Under the Trump administration, you were better off. Your family was better off. Your neighbors were better off. Our country was better off. America was stronger, richer, safer, and more confident than ever before, I would say. And we had the best economy in history. And uh, when you had me behind the desk of the Oval Office, people did respect us. Other nations respected us to a level I don't think maybe we've ever been respected <laughs> like that. But just think of it. Were you better off four years ago, or are you better off today? Yeah. Not even close. That's a, an interesting question. That's a question I'm going to be able to ask a lot. What a difference the president makes, and it does make a big difference. Since Joe Biden took over, we've had a three-year inflation rate of over 20 percent. Gasoline prices are now five, six, seven dollars and even eight dollars a gallon. By contrast, under the Trump leadership, my leadership, inflation was non-existent, and we had gasoline down to a dollar eighty-seven a gallon. Doesn't that sound beautiful? Beautiful. And we'll do it again. Drill, 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 right? We'll do it again. 
After three years of Bidenomics, a 30-year mortgage rate hit a high. It's got the 22-year high, highest it's been in, in uh, many, many years. Think of this, 22 years. But I believe you can go back because you can't get any money at 9 percent, 10 percent, 11 percent. You can't get the money, even if you want to pay the interest. The average monthly mortgage payment has gone from $1,700 under my administration to $3,400 under Crooked Joe. That's a slight difference, isn't it? Now, when I was your president, you had a 30-year mortgage rate actually hit an all-time low, the lowest it's ever been, about 26 I think 2.6 percent, think of it, and now it's uh, — you can't get the money. It doesn't matter what it is. It's anything, because you can't get the money. The banks don't want to give you the money today. A $2,000 monthly mortgage payment gets you a house worth less than $295,000. Under the Trump administration, the same number would get you a house that today would be worth $460,000. That's a big difference. As long as Crooked Joe Biden is in the White House, the American dream is dead. It's dead. You don't hear about the American dream anymore. You have people want to survive. But all of that will change the minute the polls close on election night 2024. We're going to have something that's going to be very, very special. Very special. Bigger and better and stronger than ever before, you watch. And it's going to go quickly. It's going to go very quickly. And we have to close up those borders immediately, don't we? Huh? People are coming in from prisons and mental institutions, the terrorists, many cases. The next economic boom will begin the instant the world knows that crooked Joe Biden is gone and Donald J. Trump has won four more years as President of the United States. America will be far better off with Trump, just like we were three years ago when everything — it just worked. It all worked. Everything was working. The whole world respected us. Together, we will once again fight for Iowa families and Iowa farmers like no one has ever fought before. Nobody has ever been stronger for farmers than Donald Trump. The Sanctus doesn't even like farmers. He doesn't like farmers. I said, that's not good. He doesn't want to get that word out. No, he doesn't like farmers. He fought the farm bills. He fought our everything. And I did just the opposite. I got him through. And I'll mention it a little bit later because we talk about it. I got you $28 billion, the farmers, $28 billion from China. How many people do you think would get $28 billion from China? But I got it not yet because Bobby told me, be very careful, sir. You're getting a little bit cocky with the $28 billion. I said, no, no, no. We're going to win Iowa by a lot because I got him $28 billion. Who else? Biden was sleeping. And you know what I was doing? I was tossing and turning, thinking about how I get you that money while he was sleeping. He was sleeping like a little dove, unlike Crooked Joe, who wants to dramatically increase the estate tax or the death tax. I virtually eliminated the unfair death tax. I eliminated it from small business and farms so that instead of — if you love your children. Now, if you don't love your children, then it doesn't matter. If you want to leave, does anybody not love their children? Please raise your hand. There's one guy raises it. <laughs> Sir, would you please come up? Let's talk about it. <laughs> That's funny. I, sorry, I, I think he was kidding. I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I don't think he is kidding, actually. <laughs> no, but, you know, uh, you were, as you know, before me, you were — they were going out and they were borrowing money and mortgaging the farm to pay the estate tax, or the death tax, as we call it. And now you don't have that anymore. You can leave it to your children if you love them. If you don't love them, just forget what I said, and let's think about something else. <laughs> but that's a big deal, because they were losing their farms. You would pass away. You love your children. You'd leave it. They'd go out and mortgage the farm to pay the tax, and they'd lose the farm in many cases. But Brenna Bird would come along, and she'd save them. Your attorney general, she'd say, we're not going to do this to them. We're not going to do it. Right, Brenna? She did. She actually fought for a lot of families who were put out of business by the estate tax, but now they're not, because we got that ended. I ended the NAFTA disaster, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with the brand-new USMCA, the best trade deal ever made. Actually, the deal I made with China might be better, but after COVID, I don't even talk about it. But they buy $50 billion worth of product from the farmers and manufacturers, but mostly from the farmers. $50 billion, billion, billion. Think of that. $50 billion worth. But I don't even talk about it. It was 
Probably the greatest trade deal ever made. I thought they said 15. I said, what's the number we want? Sir, 15 billion. I thought they said 50 billion. You know, maybe the hearing's not quite as good. I said, all right, you better get 50 billion. So I'm talking to him the next day. How are you doing? Sir, we're getting close. We're at 14. But I said, I don't want 14. What do you do? I want 50. And they got 50. We got 50. That was an amazing deal. But I don't talk about it too much. The deal was so good, in fact, that uh, what we did with USMCA, it was unbelievable. The deal with USMCA, it's Canada, Mexico. Uh, it's so good that they're trying to renegotiate it. They've gone back to Crooked Joe, and if they give them enough money, I'm sure they'll do it. For him! <laughs> did you see uh, Hunter today, right? He went to the wrong place. He went to the Senate instead of the House. Everyone's saying, where's Hunter? See, it always gets, where's Hunter? What a, what a two-tier system of justice we have. I took on the Communist China group of very, very tough people, like no administration in history, bringing hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our treasury. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars when no other president ever got us even 10 cents. They didn't even ask for it. Got hundreds of billions, and that's when I gave the $28 billion straight out of the tariffs I took from China, and I gave them to large portions of your great state. You were the biggest recipient, large portions. That's why when I get a little carried away, I said, there's no way, there's no way they're voting against me. Our great punter, I will tell you, there's no way. Are you from this state? Sorry. You're from this state? Oh, he's from Australia. <laughs> well, we'll adopt him. <laughs> he said hello to me before, and I said, this doesn't sound too much like Iowa, but we'll take him. <laughs> he is perfect. He's central casting. He's going, to be, he's going to be a great one. No one gets abused on trade worse than American agriculture, as everybody in the room knows, yet no other president lifted a finger to help the growers, the farmers, the people that do what so many in this audience do. Under my leadership, we have a great rebirth of loyalty to the American farmer and to the American flag, because we've lost a lot of loyalty. Remember what I did with the NFL when they had a little bit of a uh, sit-down problem? <laughs> and uh, they were sitting down. We didn't like that. I'll go around the world, and I'll put every other country on notice. If you try and abuse our farmers, you will pay a very, very steep price, like China did. They paid a very big price. To that end, I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. You know what that is. That's if China or any other country, which they do, and we were all set to do it, and then we got hit with the China virus, but we were all set to do it. But if any of them make us pay 100 or 200 percent tariff, which some do, not only China, We'll make them pay the reciprocal tariff, likewise, 100 or 200 percent right back. So, so if they're selling us cars or any product and they put on the big tariff, which a lot of them did, we cut a lot of them out. We knocked the hell out of them. We cut a lot of them out. But if they do that, we'll say, that's okay. You can keep doing it, but we're going to do the same thing to your product. Even if it's not the same product, we're going to do the same thing. It's called reciprocal trade. They do it to us. We do it to them. It's really simple. We'll take in fortunes of money, or they'll drop the tax, and we'll drop the tax, and we're all even. I will revoke China's most favored nation status. You know, their trade status, they say, but we are a growing nation. Well, we're a growing nation, too. Just take a look at our cities run by Democrats. They're a mess. I consider it worse than a growing. They have to start from a negative position with all the crime and all the horror being caused in our cities. It's horrible. You don't have that here. You don't have that in other parts of our countries. But when you have these Democrat-run cities, they are a horror show. We'll impose stiff penalties on China and other trade abusers because they abuse us on trade. At the same time, I'll end Joe Biden's war on American energy, and we will drill, baby, drill. We're going to drill. We're going to get your energy prices down so low, and that's going to knock the hell out of the inflation. Don't forget, you know, you're already up really close to 30 percent over the period of three years. Think of it, 30 percent. So we're going to get them. So we're going to start chopping the hell out of that 30 percent number. We're going to get them down so low. And you know what's going to follow? Interest rates are going to follow because inflation is going to be ended. 
and we're going to get your costs so low, your energy costs so low. Think of it, at $1.87, and we had times when it was even lower than that. But what a difference that makes from four, five, six, seven dollars, eight dollars some places in California is part of our common sense energy policies. And that's really what it is. It's not that we're conservative or we're anything. It's that we have common sense, whether it's borders or energy or taxes or anything else. But I'll once again stand up for Iowa ethanol. And just as I promised, and I promised this, I issued a historic rule declaring that E15 would be made available all year round, and I got it done. Nobody thought it would happen. I even got something else done. I'll tell you very quickly, because it's a lot of money, but it's a little boring to the average person in the audience. I got them to use the existing pumps. Does anyone know what that means? They had very good pumps, but they had to make minor changes, and they said, no, no, we want all new pumps, meaning government said that, the federal government said that. I said, what's the difference? They said, the old pumps are better. A lot of times that's true. Old equipment is better than new equipment. It's made better. And I got them to leave it, saving hundreds of millions of dollars for people here and saving you a lot of thought. It's a little bit boring to say that, but might as well get it out, right? I'll get it out. In contrast to my unwavering support for Iowa ethanol and agriculture. Ron DeSanctimonious wants to bankrupt the Iowa farmers. He does. He was totally against anything having to do with ethanol. And now, all of a sudden, he's a big ethanol proponent. But one thing about politicians, when they start that way, that's the way they end. They change for elections, but then they immediately go back. I've seen that. I've seen that plenty. DeSanctis spent his entire political career vindictively trying to kill the ethanol industry, voting again and again to devastate Iowa families by eliminating the billions and billions of dollars generated each year from ethanol and wiping out about 48,000 jobs. So he was totally opposed to ethanol. You have to go back and look at the old clips. You know who he loved? Do you know who he loved? Fauci. Well, he loved me, too. Yeah, I got him elected, so he, he loved me because I got him elected. He loved me. And, uh, yeah, I did. Then four years later, they asked, they said, uh, will you vote? Will you vote or will you run for, against President Trump? And he said, uh, I have no comment. They said, no comment. You know what that means, no comment. No comment means he's going to run. And I said, this guy's going to run. Now, he was so far down that George Washington, if George Washington came back from the dead, he couldn't have helped him. Maybe Lincoln and Washington together, but I doubt it. No, he was dead. He was gone, and I helped him, and I got him in. Then I got him past the general election. I got him past both of them. And then four years later, they said, will you run against the president? He said, I have no comment. I said, no comment. That means, Brenda, that means you're going to run to me. And a lot of my people said, sir, don't attack him. He's a Republican. I said, no, thanks. I don't need your advice. <laughs> My highly paid consultant. And speaking of that, I got your governor elected, too, by the way. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that a terrible? I took Terry Branstead, great governor, 24 years, set a record, moved him to China as the ambassador, did a great job. He knew Xi because he was selling corn many, many years ago, and she was a buyer. I mean, they actually knew each other. I said, what a perfect fit that would be. So I moved him. I said, Terry, you've been there. You had set a record. Good guy. And she was a lieutenant governor, so she took over. But then she was losing badly to a very rich, they say good-looking, but that's not my thing, farmer. A rich and good-looking farmer. And uh, she was losing badly, and she called, would you endorse me, and would you campaign for me. Would you do a rally, a big, beautiful rally? I did it. And she ended up winning the election. And then she said she was going to be neutral on this election. I said, well, I'd like to be neutral also, but that's not the way life works, you know. So uh, I said, don't come around to any of our rallies. I don't want you. And that's the story. And then she endorsed somebody that has no chance of winning. He has no chance of winning, but she did that. And I don't blame her, you know, because I, I didn't want much to do with her. But I, she endorsed somebody that has no chance to think of this. So she goes out and she endorses. And she was one of the most popular governors in the nation. And now she's proudly the least popular governor in the entire nation. Did you see that? I couldn't believe it. But anyway, well.
That's the way it is, you know? We love loyalty in life, don't you think? Loyalty, like loyalty to everything. If the Sanctus had his way, the economy of your state would be blown to shreds, and uh, there really wouldn't be, because he would be against ethanol. He will be against ethanol if anything ever happened, like a minor miracle. I would call it a major miracle. Unlike the Sanctus, I will be your ethanol champion for four more years, and I'll be a farmer's champion and a manufacturer's. You know, you're a big manufacturing state. A lot of people don't talk about it, but we're going to be everything for your state. I'll also rescue the ethanol industry from Cricket Joe's insane ethanol-killing pro-China electric vehicle mandate. Is that the dumbest thing you've ever heard? I want an electric car so I can go to the candy store, but it doesn't go much further. They don't go far. You know, sometimes a simple phrase is the best. Here's the problem. They don't go far. It costs too much money also. And they're going to all be built in China, by the way. I want to tell that to the United Auto Workers, who are going to be voting for me by the hundreds of thousands. I will repeal that left-wing lunacy on day one. The whole thing with that Green New Deal, what a disgrace. It's a destruction. Horrible. Right. It's a horrible thing happening to our country. As we speak, the Biden administration is also negotiating to redistribute billions and billions of dollars in American wealth to other countries through the so-called climate reparation. In other words, we're paying a reparation. They're saying we were so bad that we're paying reparations to other countries. You believe it? You know what that means. That means we are paying for years of abuse to other countries when we've been abused by them. Their dirty air from China blows right over our country. We're supposed to be cleaning our air, but their air, if you look at the streams, their air blows right over our country, and their air is quite dirty. You know they're building a coal plant a week. A coal plant a week. We're not allowed to use coal anymore. They're using coal, and I'll tell you what, they're using coal, and we're using clean coal. We have clean coal. You can do things with coal that are amazing, but it's not possible to compete. What are we going to do with the wind was breaking down all over the place? I passed a field today. It looked beautiful. There were about 30 wind farms or windmills, whatever the hell they are. They're rusting. They're rotting. They're making a lot of noise. I could hear it for two miles away. They, they're killing birds as I'm watching. There goes another one. And then the environmentalists say, we love them. We just love them. It's the most expensive form of energy. And, you know, but think of it. China's building every week. They're building another plant, coal plant. They're going to have a lot of energy, but every week, and these are big plants. These are bigger than anything we have. When I'm back in office, all climate reparation payments will be canceled immediately. We're not paying reparations to other countries who have abused us on trade, who have abused us on NATO, and we'll work to claw back any transfers made by Crooked Joe and his globalists in the next 12 months. He's literally giving billions of dollars to other countries that have abused us. They abuse us on trade. They abuse us on NATO and the military. They abuse us in every way because they have no respect for our country anymore. And then we're supposed to pay them reparations. Not going to happen. Crooked Joe puts China first. He puts Asia first, Ukraine first, illegal aliens first, environmental lunatics first. He puts everyone first. He, does, he doesn't put me first. He indicts his political opponent because he's doing so badly. We're beating him by 11, 12, 14 points. Seven, I saw a poll, 17 points. We're beating him by so much. So he said, what do we do? Let's indict him. He puts America last. He puts Iowa last. Well, he left Iowa. He left for another state. He left. You don't have that anymore, right? For years you had it. You don't have it. He left Iowa. He puts our workers last. He puts our farmers last. He puts everything that's good last. I put Iowa first. I put America first. Every single time I do it, it's a real easy one for me to say. That's so easy for me to say. It's no wonder. Crooked Joe Biden and the far-left lunatics are desperate to stop us by any means necessary. They're willing to violate the U.S. Constitution at levels never seen before in order to win an election. They're weaponizing law enforcement for high-level election interference because they're just losing so badly at the polls. They see these polls. The big new Des Moines, Iowa uh, register poll, I mean, it's a big, beautiful poll. I never liked it too much until uh, about two days ago. <laughs> they're left-leaning. The Des Moines Register, or would you say slightly? He goes very left. They're not so happy with this result, I don't think. But 
They are left. No, but they have a great pollster, actually. Very, uh, very powerful pollster. Very good, uh, talented pollster. Of course, if my numbers were bad, I wouldn't be saying that. They have a t I'd say they have a terrible pollster. She doesn't know. She, she, she doesn't know what she's doing. But no, she's very good. So we're leading with 51 percent, while Ron DeSanctimonious is at less than 19, and Haley is at 60. What happened to the Haley surge? You know, he could, there's a surge going on. You know, we had one on nationwide poll because a nationwide. It just came out, Morning Consul poll, very respected. We're at 67 percent. The Sanctus is at 13 and Haley's at 10. So, so we're, think of it. Another one came out, we're at 76 percent, Haley's at 9. And I keep hearing about the surge from Haley. Sir, I'll never vote against you. I'll never run against you. You've been a great president, sir. I'll never do this. This goes on for a year and a half. Then I hear she's having a news cover. I've decided to run. The whole thing, what's with these politicians, right? What's with these politicians? But also, what's with the Haley surge? You know what she was surging against? Him. So Trump's at 76 in this poll. She was at 9. He was at 10. She gained two points. I gained nine. So I gained nine. She gained two. He gained nothing. He was even. He's flat. He's dead. He's gone. Okay? Forget it. Forget it. But think of this. Think of this. They've been talking about the Haley surge. So she goes up two points. I go up, I think, 10 points, nine or 10 points. And they say, that's the Trump surge. But they don't want to say that. They said she's surging against him, but he's gone nowhere. These are the most dishonest people ever in our country. These are the most. See, the cameras, those red lights start to go off whenever I. No, there's no surge. They don't have any surge. She ever gets, has a guy in uh, New Hampshire, the governor of New Hampshire, is very selfish. He could have been the senator. We would have taken the majority, but he decided he wanted to run for president, but didn't have the guts to do it. You know, it takes guts to say, I'm going to run for president. So he played on the fringes, it's called. And he'd go around, go do every show and how he should be president, but he never had the guts to say it. And he registered at zero in the polls. And in New Hampshire, I was beating him by 60 points. And he decided not to run, okay? But he didn't have to say that because he never said he was going to run. He's one of these guys he was going to do, but he could have been a senator. Now he couldn't be elected dog catcher, and he couldn't be elected dog catcher. And he, he endorsed her today, and it's meant nothing. It's meant nothing. People are wise to this stuff, you know? They're really wise to this stuff. The Sanctimonious has been saying for the past six months, wait for the bounce. You know, he's waiting for the bounce. The bounce is going that way. It's going the wrong direction. So they're pretty close. Uh, she's sort of catching up, but we're about 50 or 60 points ahead, maybe even more than that in some of the polls. They did a morning consult. They did, they did a morning consult. I don't know, Mr. Attorney General, did you see it? Morning consult did a poll of all of the states, the whole states. And if I'm, like, leading by 35 points, that's like a bad state for me. And then they talk about the bounce. The bounce has got to be a hell of a bounce, I'll tell you. But, you know, one thing I have to say to you, because we're I know so many of you were friends, and I have to say this. We are leading by a lot, but you have to go out and vote. Because so much means, you know, going out, the, the margin of victory is very important. It's just very important, even for foreign countries watching. But it's very important. That margin of victory is so, so powerful. Brenna was telling me before, she said, sir, you've got to say something about it because you are leading by a lot. And sometimes when you're leading by a lot, everyone says, oh, why should I go and vote? The margin of victory is so important. And frankly, bad things can be happen if you don't. I understand the feeling. Let's not. But this great spirit, you got to go and vote. We got to knock the one off and then we worry about November and we're going to win. We're way up on this guy. It's uh, just incredible that he can frankly be even running anything. I can't, he can't put two sentences together. He's running. Can't find his way off the stage. See all the stairs around here? How the hell do you not, where is the stair? He says, where is the stair? To show you how evil the press is, I did this routine where I stumbled and mumbled purposely, imitating him, and they put it on. They said, he's cognitively impaired. Then, then I walked back. I'm, I'm looking, and I walk, like, huh, what? Where? Where are And he walks off the stage, and he's like...
they said it was me. I couldn't find. So I can't use sarcasm because they're very dishonest people. You know, sarcasm is a disaster. Every time I use sarcasm like that, they say, I couldn't find my way off the stage. I got stairs all over. And if you want, it's only about three and a half feet. I could jump off the front. But this guy can't find his way. So sarcasm is a very dangerous thing with, it, with a dishonest press. So, uh, you know, I go through a long story because they actually had me, like, walking into a, a just, oh, it's so sad. I said, do people believe that? And I just took a physical. You'll be happy to hear. Our great football player is going to be happy to hear this. I took a physical, and I passed with flying colors, and I took a cognitive exam. I said, doctor, give me anything you want. I want to take it. I think you actually, if you're running for president, I think you should be forced to take it. They say it's not constitutional. So instead of, uh, you know, look, we, want, we love our constitution, but look what we have in office. This guy cannot pass a cognitive exam. But I took a cognitive exam and I aced it. He said I aced it. Thank you very much, doctor. But, and you know who gave me the first time I ever even heard of it? Dr. Ronnie. Do you know Dr. Ronnie? He's one of the great congressmen now. Ronnie Jackson, he was the doctor. He's an admiral. He was the doctor in the White House. He was my doctor. He was Obama's doctor, too, by the way. I said, who's healthier? He said, sir, there's no contest. I won't tell you the answer, but you know the answer. Okay, it was me. He said, you're the healthiest guy. He said, if he didn't eat junk food, he'd live to 200 years old. That's my kind of a doctor. But he gave me at Walter Reed, they gave me a cognitive exam, and uh, I aced it. I actually aced it, got everything right. And I took another one, got everything right. I would know when it's going bad. I would tell you, <laughs> don't, if it's going bad, I'll be the first to know. <laughs> you know who would be the first to know? Front Row Joes would be the first to know. They will tell me, they'll say, sir, we love you. We've been here. We've gone to 120 rallies. But, sir, uh, it's time for you to pack it in. And I'd want them. You know what? I'd want them to say that. I'd want them. But I feel that right now I'm sharper than I was 20 years ago. And I don't know why. I don't know why. You know, it's a funny thing. And it's a very minor thing. But I'm a much better golfer than I was 10 or 15 years ago. It means something. You know, it means something in a certain way. It means something. No, but I did. I took a physical, passed it. I thought I had an obligation, and I took a cognitive and, and aced it. I, I said, which did I do better on, my physical or my cognitive? He said, actually, sir, your cognitive. And I wasn't sure I was happy about that. To one real. He said, your cognitive is incredible. It's time for the Republican Party to unite, to come together and focus our energy and resources on beating crooked Joe Biden and taking back our country. Very simple. And every dollar these losing candidates are not going anywhere. These debates, that was the lowest rated debate in history. You know that, lowest rated presidential debate. Nobody watched. Every dollar these losing candidates spend against me is a dollar donated to the campaign of Crooked Joe Biden. You know, they're spending all this money and the RNC has to stop this nonsense. Now they, I guess they finally got out, but now they're, they're being picked up by the enemy, CNN. That's the enemy. These are people that are so... They were one of the ones that did the thing with, with the imitations. You can't imitate. They were one of the groups that did the imitations. Did you see him? Did you see him? He couldn't find his way off the stage. I can't. Actually, it's hard to stay on the stage. There's so many exits, right? He couldn't find his way off the stage, but they were one. They're right there. Hello, CNN. The, the red light just went off. Anytime I mention them, they say, get that light off. It's coming now. Nonetheless, we're dominating Crooked Joe in the general election. The CNN poll of battleground states has us leading Biden by eight in Georgia and 10 points in Michigan. That's great because the auto workers are, are getting killed with this electric car. They're all going to be made in China. Poll numbers also reveal that African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, young Americans, and just about everybody else want to join the Republican Party. It's the party of the American dream, not the Democrat Party of open borders, chaos, uniform laughter at us throughout the world. And Biden and his allies are by far the worst 
representatives anywhere in the world on a thing called borders. Nobody's ever had a border policy like we do. I don't care if it's a third world nation. I always say no third world nations as bad as we have millions of people flowing in. I believe it'll be 15 or 16 million people. That's bigger than New York State. And they're coming in from places that you don't want to know about. They're bad on policy. They're bad on taxes. They're bad on everything except for cheating on elections. They're good at cheating. You know, if they put that genius to running our country, we'd have the greatest, I wouldn't have to bother running. I could be a real estate guy in New York and enjoy my life. They would literally, but I, you know, I do enjoy this. I shouldn't enjoy it. Who the hell gets indicted four times and has a good time? <laughs> Who? Who? Even Brenna's going, you're right about that. Right, Brenna? No, it's a be and you know, one of the things that's very soothing, it won't. One of the things that's very soothing is when you look at these polls, they're the best polls. Uh, the Des Moines Register said it's the best poll that they've ever had in terms of what we're doing with the lead, the, the numbers, they're the best numbers they've ever seen. When you see that, it makes you feel good. And that supersedes all of this political stuff that's going on against political opponents. And there's such a dangerous precedent they're setting, and so bad for our country. But uh, when you see the kind of numbers we're getting, and not just here, in every state. I mean, think of it, leading Michigan by 10 or 11 points. Michigan's always tough. Won it in 16. I also won it in 20, but, you know, they, they took it away. But uh, what, what, they did in, what they did in 2020 is a disgrace. And you notice they never go after the people that cheated on the election. They go after the people that are looking at the people that cheated on the election. Think of it, right? It's a disgrace what's going on with our country. The radical left, Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. We're not going to allow it. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I'm being indicted. You have to remember this, and I believe it's true. I'm being indicted for you. Never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. This is an honor to be doing this. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you, and I just happen to be standing in their way. That's truthful. You know, if I wasn't doing this, if I weren't running, or probably if I was in fifth place or fourth place or even third place, this wouldn't be taking place. But we're so far ahead of him and we're so far ahead of everyone that they've done this. And, you know, now they're saying, let's rush it to the Supreme Court. We've got to rush it, rush it, rush it. They could have started three years ago. Everything, nothing changed. They could have started three years ago, but they didn't. They started just recently with this crap. They started just recently. They could have brought this lawsuit, Brenna, three years ago, right after I left. It's been three years, but they didn't do that. And now they're saying, we have to go immediately before the Supreme Court. This thing would have all been over with two years ago. But they waited and waited and waited, and then they saw I was running, and they waited, and then they saw I was hot, and they filed lawsuits. These are very dishonest people. That's called election interference. These are very — and now they're fighting like hell because they want to try and get a guilty plea from the Supreme Court of the United States, which I can't imagine because you have presidential immunity. But strange things happen. But they want to get that because that's the only way they're going to win the election. It's a very sick thing. But think of it. They waited and waited and waited for years. In fact, nobody thought, everyone was saying, they're never going to bring any charges. They're never, most people said they're not going to bring them because they don't have anything. And then all of a sudden, we started getting hit with these lawsuits. And in fact, in New York, in the DA's office, they actually took a top prosecutor from Washington and put him in the local DA's office. They took a top prosecutor from Washington and put him with Letitia James, a very fine woman. <laughs> very fine. A woman who campaigned without knowing anything about me, I will get Trump. I will get Trump. I will get Trump. She's screaming. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. And they got nothing. They got nothing. But they have a good judge for them.
And it's a very, uh, sadly to say, it's a very corrupt system, but they got nothing. But they actually took somebody from the DOJ, put her there. They took somebody from the DOJ and put that person, top person, in the DA's office. You think my life is fun, front row Joes? You think it's fun? But it is for me because we're going to make our country greater than ever before. That's what it is. And this is far more than a campaign. This is the greatest political movement in the history of our country. That's what it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We're engaged in a righteous crusade to liberate this nation from a corrupt political class that is waging war on American democracy. They are destroying our country, rapidly destroying our country in many different ways, with injustice, with borders, with taxes, in many different ways they're destroying our country, with lack of respect from the rest of the world. If you put me back in the White House, their reign will be over and America will be a free nation once again. We're not a free nation right now. I mean, you look at school boards where they're going after the parents, where they're going after Catholics in particular. They're going after, how can a Catholic vote for this group of people? Or Democrats, they're going, I don't know what it is with Catholics. They're going violently and viciously after Catholics. They're going after Christians, but they're really going after Catholics at a level that nobody quite understands. Together, we achieved the most secure border in U.S. history. We built 561 miles of border wall, and we got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers free of charge. You know? They always say, oh, but did he get money from Mexico? First of all, I built more wall than I said I was good. I thought it would be 350, 400. We did 561. We were ready to add another 200. Could have been done in three weeks, but these guys ended up not putting it up. All you had to do was slap it up. It was all built. And they put it in areas, and I hear they sold it for pennies on the dollar, and it was the exact wall that the Border Patrol wanted, who are great people, Brandon Judd, and all of the people that I had uh, working on the border. These are incredible people. And we worked with Tom Homan, who uh, he's central casting. He was fantastic. But I appointed nearly 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices. I kept my promise, recognized Israel's eternal capital, and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem, which no other president was doing. They talked about it. They never did it. They all talked about it for decades and decades. They never did it. I got it done. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And actually, probably most important of all, but Biden's done nothing with it. I withdrew from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. The Iran nuclear deal was a disaster for Israel. Nobody wanted it in Israel, and they just went through Obama and Biden. They pushed it through, and it was a terrible thing. I withdrew from it. But they didn't do anything with the withdrawal. You know, Iran was broke when I was president. China wasn't buying oil. India wasn't buying. They weren't buying. They were broke and you didn't have the problems that you had now. You would have never seen an attack on Israel. It would have never happened. You would have never seen an attack on Ukraine. It was never going to happen. I got along very well with Putin. It was never going to, listen, it was never going to happen. You wouldn't have had inflation. You wouldn't have had any of the problems. All of these problems, inflation was caused by the crazy energy prices that this guy caused to happen. And with the historic Abraham Accords, I even made peace in the Middle East. We had peace in the Middle East. We would have had people signing left and right. And for four straight years, I kept America safe. I kept Israel safe. I kept Ukraine safe. And I kept the entire world safe. You know, there's a great leader, a very powerful leader in Hungary, Viktor Orban. And they interviewed him two or three weeks ago. Viktor Orban, very powerful man, very respected. Uh, some people don't like him because he's a tough guy. But they said the whole world is exploding. Look at what's going on in the Middle East. and Everything is exploding. And uh, it's, the world is a mess. He said there's only one thing that can be done. They said, well, what would you do? And what would you tell Biden? He said, I'd tell Biden to resign. You have to put Trump back in power. Because when he was here, when he was here, China respected him. 
And Russia respected him, and everybody respected him, and North Korea, Kim Jong-un respected him, and we had no problems, and he's acting up again, and it's very sad to see that, but we had a very good relationship. But when Trump was here, we had no problems with this man. The whole world is collapsed. You could end up very easily in World War III. You could end up in a World War III that would be like no other because of the weaponry, nu nuclear weapons in particular, but a lot of weapons. And the level of weaponry now is at a level nobody's. This won't be army tanks going back and forth shooting each other. This is, uh, this will be obliteration. And we have a man that is grossly incompetent as our chief negotiator, that's Biden. And we can't have this. We can't have this. You'll end up in World War III. We will once again have peace through strength if you put us in. And when we become the 47th President of the United States, you'll see things happening at a much different level. You will be respected again. We will be a great nation again. And I'm the only candidate who can make this promise to you. I will prevent World War III, and we are much closer than anybody understands. Don't forget, we have 11 months to go. It doesn't sound like a long time, but the kind of destruction they do. We have 11 months to go, and the kind of destruction they do is, uh, that's a long time. They can do a lot of damage. I'm talking about people from within our country. On my first day back in the White House, I will terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration. Stop the invasion of our southern border and begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. We have no choice. I will immediately restore and expand the Trump travel ban on entry from terror plague countries, and I will implement strong ideological screening on all immigrants coming in. If they want to blow up our country, if they want to kill our people, we're not letting them into our country. If you hate America, if you want to abolish Israel, if you sympathize with jihadists and then don't want your country to be great, you don't want America to be great and loving and caring, you're not coming into our country. We will restore law and order to our communities, and I will direct a completely overhauled DOJ to investigate every radical, out-of-control prosecutor in America for their illegal, racist, and reverse enforcement of the law. And something very, very important to me, because I've seen crime go to levels that nobody can even imagine over the last few years, in the cities in particular, I am going to indemnify through the federal government all police officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States for being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong actions on crime. They're afraid to do anything. They're forced to avoid any conflict. They're forced to let a lot of bad people do what they want to do because they're under a threat of losing their pension, losing their house, losing their families. They're afraid to do anything. They're incredible people. Among our greatest people, law enforcement, policemen, and women, they get uh, — they lose their pensions. They lose their families. They lose their house. They end up on the street. We are going to indemnify them against any and all liability. And we're going to stop crime in our cities. That is generally something a governor will do or a mayor will do. But we have to step in. We have to stop crime. You can't walk outside. Washington, D.C. is a horrible situation. People are being killed all the time there. They go to Washington to see our capital. We're going to have the federal government take over Washington, D.C., clean it, scrub it, build it, make it so magnificent, bring it back, and make it, most importantly, safe. We're going to do a takeover, a federal takeover of Washington, D.C., and make our capital great again. We're going to make our capital great again and safe again. Unlike the Sanctus, I will protect Social Security and Medicare for our great seniors. He doesn't want to do that. We're also going to fight to give you much better health care. Obamacare is a catastrophe for American families. Even Elizabeth Warren, often referred to as Pocahontas because of her great Indian heritage, she agrees that it needs to be fixed. Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas. You remember that one? A name from the past. Pocahontas. They said, you must apologize to her. 
I said, I apologize to Pocahontas, the real Pocahontas. We're going to make it much less expensive for the people and much better care for American patients. And on day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding of any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children, right? And I will not give one penny to any school that is a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. None. And I will keep men out of women's sports. No, it just shows you how crazy this is. You know, think of it. That I have to say, so I guess I'm a politician. I think of myself as a real estate person, a business person, but I guess I'm a politician, right? I became president. I guess I'm a politician. But to think that I'm standing up here saying that I will keep men out of women's sport. Who the hell ever thought that? When did that start? Like eight years ago, 10 years ago? Oh, but there's worse than that. You have things that are unbelievable. You know, with transition, a lot of transition. Uh, you have things that are unbelievable that you say like, for instance, I will stand up for parental rights. Who the hell wouldn't stand up for parental rights? No, but why would you have to say that? I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. I will protect innocent life. We will restore free speech. And very importantly, I will secure our elections. We will do it differently. And our goal will be one-day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. Very simple. One-day voting, paper ballots, voter ID. But until then, you have to get out and you have to vote. Please get out and vote. Pretend we're one point behind instead of 35 points up. The more we win by, the more we have a voice. Think of it that way. You got to get out and vote, even if you think we're going to win. Who knows? You know, sometimes polls are wrong. I mean, they got to really be wrong. That would be record setting. But, but you got to get out and vote, vote, vote. And then we worry about November. You know, do one thing first. Uh, Biden, I can't imagine this, this guy. I just can't even imagine that he can be acceptable, allowing the millions and millions of people into our country like he's done. Uh, Afghanistan, you know, we forget about Afghanistan. Most embarrassing day in the history of our country. All the things that he did so bad. But we have to worry about this caucus coming up. January 15th, Martin Luther King. It's Martin Luther King Day. So it's easy to remember. We have to get out and vote. Even if we're going to do well, the people, the caucus captains, I saw them backstage and they said, oh, sir, it's going to be great. We got to make it great. We can't sit home. If we sit home, we're losing. You're hurting us because we have to, we have to put up big numbers. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, and I used to say the five, but it wasn't enough. You couldn't add them up that the 10 worst in the history, they would not have done the destruction to our country as Joe Biden as his horrible administration have done. So if you want to save America from crooked Joe Biden, then get every patriot and everybody that you know, register Republican. We have to get registered Republican, go out and register and get them out and vote in their local precinct caucus at 7 p.m., 7 p.m. on Monday, January 15th, Martin Luther King holiday. And we're asking you to commit to caucus for us and bring as many people as you can. Say, Irma, let's go. Well, I really was wanting to watch television. No, I'm sorry, Irma. <laughs> Sign up at ia.donaldjtrump.com. Okay? So in conclusion, together we're taking on some of the most menacing forces and vicious opponents our people have ever seen some of the most menacing forces, many from within our country. But no matter how hateful and corrupt the communists and criminals we're fighting against may be, and they are vicious, vicious people that I believe hate our country, you must never forget this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. This is your home. This is your heritage and your American liberty is your God-given right. You're not allowed to use the word God anymore. Did you see that one? They don't want you to use the name 
They don't want you to say God anymore. From Sioux City to Iowa City, from Fort Dodge to Cedar Rapids, and from Des Moines to Davenport, we stand on the shoulders of generations of Iowa patriots who gave everything they had for our country and for our freedom. Credible people, incredible, brave, strong people. This great state was founded by tough frontiermen, strong pioneer women who defied the dangers to carve out a life for a great family, beautiful home and family. They tamed the wilderness, they braved the elements, they tilled the soil, they worked the fields, they built the factories, and they poured out their blood, sweat, and tears to make this country into the greatest nation in the history of the world. But now, we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has the highest inflation in 50 years, where banks are collapsing and interest rates are skyrocketing. Likewise, we are a nation where energy costs have reached the highest levels in our history. We are no longer energy independent or energy dominant as we were just a few short years ago. We are a nation that is begging Venezuela and many others for oil. Please, please, please help us, Joe Biden says. Yet we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other nation anywhere in the world. We are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will be reducing their oil production while at the same time substantially increasing the price. And we met that threat by announcing that we will no longer be drilling for oil in large areas of Alaska or elsewhere in the States. We are a nation that is consumed by the radical left's Green New Deal, yet everyone knows that the Green New Deal is fake and will lead to our destruction. We are a nation whose leaders are demanding all electric cars, despite the fact that they can't go far, cost too much, and whose batteries are produced in China with materials only available in China, when an unlimited amount of our gasoline is available inexpensively in the United States, but is not available in China. And now we are a nation that wants to make our revered and very powerful army tanks the best in the world. We want to make them all electric so that despite the fact that they are also not able to go far, few pollutants will be released into the air as we blast our way through enemy territory in an environmentally friendly manner. And they also want to make our fighter jets with a green stamp of energy savings, though losing 15% efficiency, but allowing us to keep our enemy's atmosphere clean of emissions as we viciously and unceremoniously attack them at levels never seen before. Who are these people that would do this to us? Who are these people who would ruin our country? We are a nation that ended oil exploration and production in the United States just as the price of oil reached an all-time high. What other country would do such a foolish and self-destructive thing? Can we be energy independent? Can we ever be energy dominant again? Yes, oh yes, and quickly, says President Trump. Yes, oh yes, and quickly. We are a nation that surrendered in Afghanistan, leaving dead soldiers, American citizens, and $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment in the world behind, and also abandoning Bagram, 
one of the biggest military bases anywhere in the world, and only one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons. We are a nation that allowed Russia to devastate Ukraine, killing hundreds of thousands of people, and it will only get worse. It would never have happened with me as your president, and for four straight years, it didn't happen. Likewise, the horrifying attack on Israel would never have happened. They wouldn't even have thought of doing it if President Trump was in the Oval Office. It wouldn't have been a thought. Iran was broke under the Trump administration. They didn't have the money to fund Hamas, Hezbollah, and all of the other instruments of terror. But those sanctions were lifted by a corrupt Biden administration, and now Iran is a rich country with $200 billion and another $6 billion for hostages and $10 billion from electricity for Iraq, all compliments of an incompetent Biden administration. And China, with Taiwan, is next. We are a nation that allows the radical left to violently attack our cities, leaving behind massive destruction and death. And nothing happens to the violent criminals that do these terrible things. There is no punishment, but when the people who love our country protest in Washington, they become hostages, unfairly imprisoned for long periods of time. So sad, isn't it? So sad. We are a third world nation that has weaponized its law enforcement against opposing political parties like never before. We've got a Federal Bureau of Investigation that won't allow bad election changing facts to be presented to the public and which offers $1 million to a writer of fiction about Donald J. Trump to lie and say it was fact, where Hunter Biden's laptop from hell was Russian disinformation, and the FBI knew it wasn't. But 51 intelligence agents said it was, and the Department of Justice that refuses to investigate egregious acts of voting irregularities and fraud. And we have a man who is totally corrupt and the worst president in the history of our country, who is cognitively impaired in no condition to lead and is now in charge of dealing with Russia and possible nuclear war, which would be World War III and far more devastating than any of the previous world wars because of the weaponry that no one even wants to think about. We are a nation that no longer has a free and fair press. Fake news is all you get, and they are indeed the enemy of the people. They refuse to discuss the Biden crime family, but enjoy covering the false indictments of Donald J. Trump, who has done nothing wrong except win an election. We are a nation where free speech is no longer allowed and where crime is rampant and out of control like never before. We are a nation that is allowing Iran to build a massive nuclear weapon and China to use the trillions and trillions of dollars it has taken from us to build a military to rival our own. And less than three years ago, we had Iran, China, Russia, and North Korea in check. They respected us. They were afraid of us. They weren't going to do a thing against us. And everyone knows it. Now Russia and China are holding summits to carve up the world. And perhaps most importantly, we are a nation that no longer is admired, respected, or listened to on the world stage. We are a nation that in many ways has become a joke. We are a nation that is hostile to liberty, freedom, faith, and even to God. We are a nation whose economy is collapsing into a cesspool of ruin, whose supply chain is broken, whose stores are not stocked, whose deliveries are not coming and whose educational system is ranked at the very bottom of every single list. We are a nation where large packs of sadistic criminals and thieves are allowed to go into stores and openly rob them, beat up and kill their workers and customers, and leave with armloads of goods but with no retribution, 
where the authority of our great police has been taken, where their families and pensions have been threatened, and their lives would be destroyed for the mere mention of the words law enforcement. We are a nation where fentanyl and all forms of illegal drugs are easier to get than groceries to feed our beautiful families. A nation whose once revered airports, those beautiful, beautiful airports, are dirty, a crowded mess. You sit and wait for hours and then are notified that the plane won't leave and they have no idea when they will, where ticket prices have tripled. They don't have the pilots to fly the planes. They don't have the qualified air traffic controllers. And they just don't know what the hell they're doing. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, willpower, and strength. We are a nation that has lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. It was the hardworking patriots like you who built this country and is the hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists. We will throw off the sick political class. We will rout the fake news media. We will drain the swamp, and we will liberate our country from these tyrants and villains once and for all. Like those great patriots before us, we will not bend. We will not break, we will not yield, we will never give in, we will never give up, and we will never, ever back down. With your support, we will go on to victory, the likes of which no one has ever seen before. We will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House, and we will take back our country on Election Day 2024. The great silent majority is rising like never before, and under our leadership, the forgotten men and women will be forgotten no longer. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. We will make America great again. We will love our country. We will take care of our country. We will pray to God for strength and for liberty. We will pray for God and we will be with God. Iowa, thank you very much. This was a great honor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. God bless you all.